the entire animal kingdom, there's only one creature that participates in religion. The long, thin-limbed insect known as the praying mantis. The pious practitioners are known for their iconic praying appearance caused by their unique arm structure, but it's not really clear what they're actually praying to. However, judging by the dark deeds praying mantises get up to when no one is looking, I'd imagine they're probably praying to… Satan. Completely contrary to the image they might conjure up in your mind of a peaceful churchgoer, these creatures are vicious, ruthless hunters that excel in disguising themselves. Like sneaky, lethal disciples, praying mantises hide in plain sight, just waiting for a tasty morsel to cross their path so it can meet its demise. The immense camouflaging abilities they possess are critical to their way of life, because these things live to eat, and they only eat things that are living. Unfortunately for male praying mantises, that means they sometimes don't survive mating season. Hi Edpop viewers, I'm Jay and you're watching Bad Science, the only show that dives into the weird side of nature to find out the things you really want to know, and then brings you all the dark, dirty facts you won't find on other channels. And as always, I'm going to be presenting this knowledge to you the only way I know how, badly. This week, the stealthy assassin known as the Praying Mantis is up on the Bad Science chopping block. So join us as we break down these bloodthirsty weirdos and expose their cannibalistic rituals for your viewing pleasure. Sickos. Praying mantises are actually just one member in a wide-ranging order of insects called Mantodia. Mantodia as a whole contains more than 2,400 different species that are categorized into 460 genera across 33 families. That's an awful lot of bugs, but thankfully they are spread out all over the globe mostly in tropical and temperate environments. That means there's almost zero chance of an unstoppable mantis uprising that overthrows humankind. Almost. That's certainly something I'm praying doesn't happen, but as you will have understood, they pray too. All mantises have several distinguishing visual attributes. Triangle-shaped heads, two bulbous compound eyes with teeny tiny pupils, and elongated bodies supported by four legs, as well as their signature forearms. The unique structure of their serrated arms earned the praying mantis its name due to how they fold and come together when the creature is at rest. Looks more like they're doing the Michael Jackson thriller dance to me, but I'm not a scientist. If I was, these suckers would be called the thriller mantises. You definitely know a praying mantis when you see one, but scientifically, these creatures have a lot in common with some unlikely creepy crawlies you might find around your dirty, dirty house. For instance, praying mantises are closely related to both cockroaches and termites. You know, two hideous bugs that would make you call the exterminator. All three insects are members of the Dictyoptera suborder, which is classified by chewing mouthparts, thread-like antenna, and two sets of wings. Just try not to think about the mouthparts. Ugh, gross. However, while termites feast upon the cellulose found in wood, plants, and paper, and cockroaches are omnivores, praying mantises are explicitly carnivores. Their bodies are especially suited to their snacking endeavors thanks to a number of unique features. I'm sure you can't wait to hear about those, so let's start right at the top with their nightmarish faces. Their heads are topped off by smell-sensing antenna, which they can frequently be seen cleaning by bringing to their mouth and chewing down the length of each one. This kind of doubles as flossing, which means a praying mantis's teeth are probably cleaner than yours. Then they have their super special eyes, which are actually composed of multiple lenses. This composition of visual receptors allows mantises to track moving objects with great accuracy at the expense of being totally colorblind. However, they also see the world in full 3D differently from any other creature in nature, including humans. In fact, praying mantis vision is being studied to give robots better visual capabilities. Scientists have even made special 3D glasses for them to get a better idea of how they see, like the kind you might wear to watch a 3D movie. Another interesting feature some praying mantises have is an ear. Yes, a single ear. Select species of mantis have just one ear that is located on the underside of its abdomen, in between the back legs. Due to the location and lack of a second one, praying mantises can't discern the direction a sound comes from. They just hear it. However, what makes this organ interesting is the ability to detect ultrasonic frequencies, like those emitted by their mortal enemies, bats. Hey, wait! Now's the time! Subscribe to the channel to be entertained while learning. It's free! Praying mantises can detect the echolocation screeches of bats, 
which they then used to evade them as much as possible, using their physical characteristics to twist, roll, and dive bomb away from trouble. If they do get caught by a bat, they aren't above glowing and stabbing at their captor in hopes of escaping. While all praying mantises have the same general shape and body structure, some have adapted to their environments to camouflage themselves better. Take for instance the dead leaf mantis. This variant of praying mantis has adopted a mottled, brown outer appearance, with textures that make it look so similar to a dead leaf from a tree that you wouldn't even know it's there, which is exactly what it's counting on. There's also the orchid mantis, the violin mantis, the Arizona unicorn mantis, the nightmare mantis, and many, many more. Each one has unique appearances and features that it has adapted to exist in its environment, but some people also keep these things as pets. Not me though, what do I look like, a psychopath? When on the lookout for their next meal, praying mantises stay absolutely still so as not to scare away their dinner. In addition to their massive globular eyes, they have necks that allow them to look from side to side, giving their heads a 180 degree turning radius. No other insects have this feature, they're all stuck with whatever direction their body happens to be facing. Speaking of praying mantis hunting habits, their diet is pretty varied. Of course, they eat smaller insects like crickets, grasshoppers, and beetles, but they also aren't afraid to munch on things much bigger than them. Praying mantises have been observed taking down hummingbirds and other small birds, as well as frogs, fish, and lizards. They lie in wait, lock on with their big scary eyes, and then strike with lightning fast speed. Then they use their sharp forearms and stabbing hand appendages to pin their prey down, chewing it apart with sharp mandibles while the meal struggles for its life. I'm really glad I'm not small enough for a praying mantis to eat. Unfortunately, we can't talk about the things praying mantises eat without talking about their mating habits. So buckle up, because this one gets real weird. An experiment conducted by Dr. Kate Berry, an ecologist from Macquarie University, found that female praying mantises attract males in a way that might sound surprising to some who have less junk in their trunk. It's their butts. The experiment concluded that male mantises like big, brightly colored butts and they cannot lie. The difference in color allows them to stand out from their environment, usually green grass, enough to be seen by other famously colorblind mantises, but not enough to be seen by potential predators. As for the size of the badonkadonk, that appeared to signal a healthy mate that is full of eggs ready to be fertilized. I'm more of a leg man myself, but there's no shame in the game, and who doesn't like a big butt? However, once the deed is done, the male might find himself with a big butt and no eyes to enjoy it. Scientists estimate that roughly 28% of praying mantis mating rituals end in sexual cannibalism, in which the female bites off the head of the male and consumes him. Strangely, studies have shown that these events tend to cause the female mantis to produce even more eggs, which increases the chance of reproduction. This is pure sadism and masochism. Once the female mantis's eggs have been fertilized, she deposits them somewhere safe in the fall, usually a nondescript leaf or twig. However, these aren't your typical insect eggs. Another disgusting feature of the Mantodea order is that they lay gross, sticky egg sacs called otheka. In a process that can take anywhere from one hour to five hours, the female mantis sprays a foamy substance from its big fat butt and deposits her eggs within it. Over time, that substance hardens to form a protective barrier that prevents the eggs from being damaged or eaten before they have a chance to hatch. What did we learn today? Praying mantises come in all kinds of varieties. They'll fight anything, and they like big butts. Sure, but they also play a significant part in their ecosystems. They keep insect populations in check by feasting on them. They themselves serve as food for certain birds and spiders, and they provide companionship to the freaks who decide to keep them as pets. Some people even attract praying mantises into their gardens to provide free pest control services. Just like every other creature we cover here on Bad Science, the praying mantis isn't just a murderous master of disguise that will eat anything. It's also a member of our planet and is therefore deserving of care and respect. Thanks for watching Bad Science. I'm Jay, and I'll see you in the next episode.